250 amp power supply, will it work? Well, I need to know because this is going to power up the next project on this channel. If you thought that 22 volt 60 amp tube was neat, wait till you see what this thing is going to power up. Let's get started. This 250 amp power supply, which is an old welder, is built like a battleship and pretty much weighs the same. This thing is incredibly heavy and it's absolutely perfect for the next project because the outputs are current limited. So I can get everything just right. So say you were going to use this thing as a welding machine. It's very simple. So we have three numbers here, low, medium and high. So you can see the grounds. We have low, medium and high. So say you wanted to do some low current welding at say 20 amps with your favorite 6013. You plug your stinger in here and the ground would go into the low on the bottom. Say you wanted to weld at 30 amps, so it would be current limited off at 30 amps. Stinger plugged into here and since this is the high setting, you'd put the ground in the high. So this, you know, should most likely be called common. I don't think this is rectified or anything like that, but they've, they've called it ground on the bottom. So just say we wanted to weld at 125 amps. Stinger gets plugged in here. Since this is the medium, the ground goes into the medium. Just that simple. Absolutely perfect for this next project. In fact, I don't know if I could have come up with a better power supply than this. So this is absolutely great. Now, I don't know the condition of this thing at all. So as you can see, I'm going to need to put a plug on this, but I need to look inside this power supply and see what's going on, make sure everything is okay inside. We'll get a good idea of how they're doing the regulation here, probably some form of choke or reactor or something like that. Nice big switch on the front, rated at 50 amps at 240 volts. So uh, good stuff. Really, really good stuff. You're probably very curious about this next project. What is this next project that's going to take such a big power supply? Well, I can tell you this without destroying the surprise. I'm pretty sure nothing like this has ever been done on YouTube before. And there's a pretty good chance that you've never seen anything like this before. So if this doesn't lock in mad scientist, I think this next project absolutely will. If you haven't subscribed and you haven't tapped the bell symbol, you're definitely going to want to do that because what you're about to see in the next video, of course, if this thing is functioning, is going to be pretty incredible. Anyways, let's check this thing out so I can get moving on this next video so I can show you exactly what I'm doing. All right, let's see what's going on inside this thing. That's not too bad. That looks pretty big. That's some big stuff in here. Look at that. I'll get you a little closer so you can take a look straight down in there. It's actually looking pretty nice inside this thing. A little fan that moves freely on the top. We have a reactor on the side here. And we have a very large power transformer in the bottom here. And on the top, we have some multi-tap windings, which is very interesting, very interesting setup on the top here. And most of those taps, aside from this one here, run off to the front. Very, very simple setup. I don't see any rectifications directly from the transformer out, so it's definitely all AC. So it looks relatively clean in here. So coming in from the mains, the white is just capped off. So they're just using black and red. So there's red and black on the very large switch right here, which is this here. You see that there? On that switch, let's move the focus over just a touch. And uh, yeah, so it's just a 
the two hots and uh, the green, which is a ground of the case here. So that should be pretty easy to attach on the main power cable right over here. So I'll get a plug on this thing, plug it in and see if the thing powers up. And then I will uh, take some voltage readings and see what the uh, open circuit voltage is with this thing attached to 240. They have a bunch of stuff on the tags here, but you know, I just want to verify that to make sure everything is okay. But it looks relatively solid. It's nice and clean inside, aside from, you know, dust and debris, probably years and years and years of just, yeah, just sitting in a shop, probably, you know, running air through this thing and pulling in all of the dust and welding fumes and everything. The fun thing is always getting these things nice and square so that the lid actually comes down properly. So these have all got to be sitting in square or this won't come down. So you always got to fool with this just a little bit to get everything just right and then it should just drop closed just like that. So that is a nice solid plug. That'll never come out of there just the way I like it. So it should be on there for a while. Now, of course, if this thing doesn't work, it might just come right off again. Let's get the other screw in here and let's power it up. Well, here we go. Well, I can definitely tell you, it sounds mean. All right. Let's see what we've got going on here. Hopefully you can see this. Maybe not. Maybe I can hang this over the edge so you can see it. Like so. Is it going to work? Hopefully you can see that on an angle. Maybe I can uh, actually zoom that in just a touch. All right. So we've got, see what we get. AC volts. 88 volts. Wow. 91 and high is 97 volts so this is one of those welding machines that you definitely wouldn't want to touch the stinger ever so yeah so for the fun of it let's uh let's see what the uh the high current one is Oddly enough, only 48 volts. So it seems like they're probably upping the voltage here and maybe adding that reactor right there to make it strike easier 
So you can, you know, for low current welding, you can strike the electrode a little easier. I think that's probably what they're doing. So let's try something around uh, 200 amps and see what that's like. Yeah, I see that it's down at 49 volts now. So quite a bit different. Let's see what high here. And 58, yeah, so quite a bit different from this up here. So that reactor there looks like it's in line with these. So let's go back to low here again and see what we got. Yeah, you see we're back up at 88. And then of course with high, <laughs> 97 volts. So now again, this is without any load, right? So as soon as you were to strike an arc with this thing, uh, you know, of course it would, you know, pull down, right? Because there's current being drawn and there's a reactor in line, so it's soft. But still, that's um, a lot of AC volts, <laughs> especially, you know, definitely gloves and no nearby puddles or anything like that. It looks like it would work absolutely fine. So, you know, all the outputs here are, it's so, if you have voltage on something like this, the chances of this thing working are pretty much after that point, you know, aside from maybe a bad connection inside. So say maybe one of the connections were oxidized or something like that, you know, 90 plus percent of the time, it's gonna be just absolutely fine, right? So as long as I'm reading voltages on these taps, I know this thing is going to work. I don't even really need to load this. Again, this thing is so crude, right? It's transformers and reactors. There's, you know, there's no solid state stuff in this. There's no diodes or anything, right? So very, very simple. And that's why these things live forever. That's why these things just, they don't die. You know, it's, there's nothing to really fail inside this thing. It's, um, it's just that easy. So this thing is going to work just absolutely fine. And uh, that leads us on to the next part of the project, which is going to be extremely interesting. I'm sure you're gonna find it really interesting. Are you interested in learning more about electronics, both modern and antique electronics alike? I teach electronics in a way that's very easy to understand, complete with circuits for you to build, both modern and antique, and at this point, over 200 videos for you to learn from. If you're interested, or this does sound interesting to you, you're definitely gonna wanna check out my electronics course on Patreon. It's very affordable, and I'm there to pass my electronics knowledge on to you. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab, and I'll pin the link at the top of the comment section. So if you click on one of those links, it'll take you right there. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. I've got lots of great stuff coming. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.